This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. Get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. The recording has started. Hello and welcome once again to Super Connectivity, uh, the world of great comics, amazing television, and uh, misleading variant covers. Uh, I'm your host, Charlie Il Professore Esore, and with me as always is the handsome man whose face you almost never see unless you subscribe to YouTube. Phil, fill me in parish. That's the guy. Hey, Philip. Oh, welcome, 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 welcome to Super Connectivity. Uh, it's been a week, and uh, what a week it's been, man. Punisher drops, uh, deadly classes out there. Um, the good place is still good. Um, oh, but the, what about the big thing that dropped this week? Which was? Spider-Man Far From Home tra- first trailer oh, came out. Oh, yes. Spider-Man Far From Home with the great Mysterio! Actually, I was telling the kids about Mysterio. I was giving them a backstory on Mysterio, and they're like, oh, that is so awesome. <laughs> they, they, they really think that Mysterio was like, how is this the first time they're doing Mysterio? What, he's a special effects guy who just does all kinds of crazy tricks? And I knew if anyone, like, I knew if anyone like Mysterio would be Tristan, they'd be like, "Oh yeah." Yeah, yeah well, actually, it was John who was big, into, <clears throat> big into that. Um, the elementals are awesome. I really dislike this fan rumor. Oh, that's Hydro Man and Sandman. It's like, did you even read the plot description? You do know the villain is Mysterio. Exactly. He's not going to hire Hydro Man and Sandman just to j- j- just to just to make them play. You know, I mean, really, it's. Some people, you know, sometimes I think they, they, people talk about these fan theories without doing the hard research. Well, they some don't. I think all some people do is, like, you know, watch some movies, and they're like, oh, I Googled something. It's like, okay. Yeah. They giggled something, or they Googled something? Well, well they did something. Both. <laughs> yes. They Googled, then they giggled. Um, yeah, but no, it, it, it's really neat, and uh, I think the, the one fan theory that is interesting that we're getting right now is... Would Nick Fury trank Ned? Now that, yes. Yeah, I mean, again, I think I was, I think I said, you know, did, did Fury, would the real Nick Fury have to do that? Couldn't he meet Spider-Man somewhere else when Ned's not around? And again, would, everyone's telling me, yeah, he would, but would Nick Fury throw a 16-year-old, a 15 or 16-year-old kid into the field? Even Tony Stark was uh, not too thrilled with that in Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah, I mean it's 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 an interesting question. Although, as I say, how old was Cap when he first put on the red and blues? You know, and for what it's worth, you know, the the kid wants to be there, and yeah. not for nothing. We have sixteen year old American U.S. soldiers bravely serving all around the world. You know, did it, the kid it, did the kid want to be there because he didn't want to take his suit, but his aunt may have packed it. Yeah, well, did Aunt May pack it or did it? <laughs> uh, um, or did uh, Nick bring it? And not for nothing, here's the thing, because you know, people are going to say a 16-year-old kid can't join the military without parental permission. But clearly, Aunt May... Gave is permission. Supportive. It was, she's supportive of the spider Manning lifestyle. Yeah, that's you know? what you see in this trailer, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, so... I think it's possible, but I do think it's 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 a real question, and that leads us to that other question: Are we certain this is Nick Fury? Yeah, because we have the other grand illusionist uh, hero of uh, or villain of the Spider-Man mythos, which is the Chameleon. Does he have powers, or is he still just a makeup artist? Um, it's weird. For a while, he had stuff done to his face where he could like just like alter it at will, but like clay uh, face, clay but, face him. yeah. But but recently, I swear it was it's been back to mask. <laughs> so who who knows? Yeah, well, you know, not for nothing that 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 whole restructuring you're facing that can't that that can't be good for you. No, you know, not not for nothing that can't be good for you. Um, they're, they're, they're sort of Zartaning him, you know. Zartan originally was just holograms. They're like, no, he's got some kind of chameleon DNA too. It's like really, you gotta give him Zart- just have Zartan be Zart- just let Zartan be Zartan. 
That's my opinion. Plus, it could be it could still even just be Mysterio. It could be one of his many illusions. Yeah, well, that could be true too. Well, you know, they could merge the characters. You can do. I mean, it's the MCU. They can do anything. Mm-hmm. But I mean, yeah. yeah. But yeah, the, yeah. The whole elemental thing has to be like a Mysterio illusion because, as everyone on was saying, you know, and as I knew, it's like in Mysterio's first appear. Well, his first appearance as Mysterio, mm-hmm. he he pretended to be a hero. He framed Spider Man for some robberies, and then he. You know, walks into the bugle. I will stop the sp- evil Spider-Man, Mister Jameson. Yeah. And not for nothing, uh, there's a moment in the trailer where he tells Spider-Man, "I'd stay away from that if I were you." Basically, yeah. don't get too close to the magic kid. <laughs> don't, don't look behind. Don't look behind that curtain. You know, exactly. <laughs> Pay no attention to the Hydro Man behind that curtain. <laughs> um. So yeah. So I. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's. It's big. It's exciting. Um, it is. It is everything we want from an MCU Spider-Man. We've got our. We have our connected universe. We got Happy Hogan flirting with uh, Aunt May. Aunt May. Yeah. Well, you know. You know what? They took Pepper Potts out of Happy Hogan's life. They got it. They got to give. They got to give. Uh, got to give him something. Because you know. Because you know, Happy was married to to Pepper. In People comic, forget yeah. that. Yeah, you know that was that was their love. You know the two the two put upon freaking people that had to deal with Tony's nuttiness finding each other. And I was kind of always hoping that Happy and Pepper would get together just to freaking say, you know what? Yeah, who cares about you, Tony, being a Ooh. rich, handsome billionaire? You're also very selfish and self-important. And you know what? Doesn't matter how rich you are if you're not a nice person. Girls don't go. like that. Ladies don't like that. Women don't like that. You know, they don't like being with not nice people. You know. <laughs> yep. Now you know. Uh, yeah. So I was. Re- I'm a little disappointed that they actually are getting together. You know, because honestly, like Tony, he's just such a toxic person. Mm-hmm. And it's just always, oh, you know, I just, you know, I, you know, I can do it. He's just, uh, he's not a good person. I, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't date him. I'll say it. I will not date Tony Stark. <laughs> not that he offered, because he's fictional, but, you know, just not sure about that. Anyway, but, yeah, that's far from home. And they are far from home. They're in Europe. Holiday Road. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yes, but, yeah, like we said, we get Ned again. We get uh, MJ. I like MJ. Yeah, I like <laughs> You look nice. Oh, so that gives me value. No, no, no. I'm messing yeah. with you. Yeah. And she said, "You're pretty, and <laughs> you look pretty." Uh, yeah. Yeah, and then she says, "You look pretty," which he does. Yeah. Come on, mm-hmm. he's cutie. He's a gorgeous little patootie. You want to squeeze those cheeks? They're all movie stars. Uh, and then he's we, a little Spider Man. We even get Flash Thompson back. <laughs> Good on and, how great that. Yeah, that's like that end of the trailer. He's like, "Hey, you know, you know, Spider Man's all great and everything." And then Peter's there. He's like, "Hey, Dick Wolf." <laughs> But you know, this isn't the one thing I really don't like about this this Flash. Um, Flash hmm. Is he never has, he doesn't actually, so actual Flash Thompson, because he was the big high school jock, actually had something that Peter didn't have. Like the physicality. Well, he had the physicality, he had the popularity, mm-hmm. he had all these things. This Flash Thompson just seems like a weaker, dumber version of Peter. Without superpowers, and mm-hmm. it becomes this. It becomes this quality, like you know. I guess he yeah, like, but what, what? snarky comments about Peter, but I don't see. I I I guess also he's rich. I was gonna say, that. wasn't yeah. he rich? Wasn't that like his thing? Yeah. Yeah, but that's such a uh, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I just feel like that. First off, that's unearned. Unlike real Flash Thompson's physicality. Mm-hmm. You know, real Flash Thompson. You know, he got to be a pro sports star, or not a pro sports star, but a high school high sports school, star. Yeah. You know, he actually had this char- He had he had a thing, had qualities to him that informed the growth of his character arc. Mm-hmm. This Flash Thompson, I just don't feel like it has that room to grow. I don't, I don't know what the, you know. Maybe they're going to surprise me. They certainly brought back the whole. I can't stand Puny Parker, but um. But Spider-Man. Uh, but I love Spider-Man quality. The question is, are we going to get an option where we are going to have some 
redemption for Flash Thompson where he gains respect for Peter in a way that he hasn't before. You know, because remember, when Peter stands up to Flash, then Flash starts to respect him. Mm -hmm. And then they build their friendship. Then we find out that actually Flash's life is not all all happiness and all this kind of stuff. And then that gives so much into Flash Thompson's growth. Um, we do see the stealth suit, Spider-Man, the Spider-Man noir suit. Yes. Although, Tristan tossed it out there. Wait, is that Agent Venom? Hmm. And we do have a Flash Thompson who's obsessed with Spider-Man. Does he make his own Spider-Man suit? Is Ooh. that Spider-Man or is that Flash Thompson trying to be Spider-Man? Because he is a genius kid, too. I mean, he may not be as genius as Pete, but he can probably pull off a stealth suit. And Or, or is that something of Mysterio's? Because, like I said before, in his first appearance, Mysterio was, like, framing Spider-Man. What if he has, like, a spare Spider-Man suit sitting there and Flash stumbles across it? Anything is possible. There's lots of options here. And there's a lot, as, as with all trailers, there's a lot more questions than answers. Um, we don't know. Does this take before the snap or after the snap? It takes place after the snap. Because uh, <laughs> it's not like Peter mentions, oh, yeah, I just got back from Europe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you only go to Europe when you die. That, that's the only thing I got to say. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you know what? Oh, it'll be the perfect place to introduce the Osborns, though. Oh. <laughs> Because they're in here. All the time, yes. <laughs> That's where they were. They were in here. That's where they weren't in the first one. Take your death, go to Europe. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Uh <laughs> oh, I wonder um I wonder if that's a, like the story reason why Tony Stark's not in this movie because it's pr after Snap, maybe Aunt May's mad at Tony Stark for letting Peter die. I know he's back, but may you know. Yeah, well, they're still letting Happy there. And you know, and again, Peter didn't die, he faded away. Well, you know, as far as Aunt May's concerned, you die, you know. Well, assuming that's assuming Aunt May didn't didn't go in the snap, you know. Oh, true. Well, of that, they, they, could, they could all be in the Soul Stone right now. It's like, oh, hey, Peter, how you been? <laughs> that's fine, you know. Okay, so uh, so Star Lord's not around, not allowed around any of them. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, Star Lord. Uh, so, so, so. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, man, there was a good theory that Tristan had about. About this snap. There was something else. Uh, can't remember it. Uh, anyway, what else we got? Um, yeah. So I mean, that's that's the big news. Um, you know, we we uh, now that comes out that comes out after Infinity War, right? Yeah, it's uh, that first weekend in July. Yeah. Yeah, and kind of, so kind of, like, kind of kind of like Ant Man and Wasp did uh, this past year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so so at Ant Man last year they're gonna do Spider Man this year. Wait, there's an Ant Man and a Spider Man? Nah. Yes, now we need is a cockroach man. Um all right, human fly. Oh okay. Um and man, um you had sent something. Oh, Kelsey Grammer is joining Arrow. Well we'll save that for Capes and Lunatic. Yeah, it's because I don't even watch Arrow. Um Oh, Let's talk Deadly Class for a minute. Okay. Um, now, this is based on a graphic novel that I have not read, so I have no idea if it's, if it's good or not. But um, I really like the conceit. It's basically Harry Potter for murderers. Uh, <laughs> except they actually make this interesting point about not being like the chosen secret prince. You know, it's just no, they have these people that are unaffiliated. They're just good at killing people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just making it on their merits, you know. Unlike, you know, Flash, the the the, the Spider-Man Flash Thompson, where they uh, just really are just resting on other people's laurels because he didn't make the money; his dad did. You know, that's the thing. Um, man, it'll be kind of dark if we actually get that abusive parent uh, background in the. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I mean, like I, like I said, I I am a big Flash Thompson fan. Um, since 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 they went full Agent Venom with him, I really like that character. I'm sad he's gone. Mm -hmm. I really hope this Flash Thompson doesn't tarnish that legacy. You know? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's 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 a little uh, it's a little difficult to 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 sort out. Um, uh, as I said, I've just been catching up on. Oh, uh, but anyway. Uh, so Deadly Class. Uh, I'm very excited about it. I really liked it. It was enjoyable it was um and, you know it does a great it does a great mean kids dynamic you know mm -hmm. with like different groups in school you know 
you know, you have the, the, the Latino gang and the African American gang and the Asian gang and you have Russians in there too. So there there's all sorts of people going on there. Um, and Trent Reznor's in it as the uh, poisons uh, professor. So I hope he I hope he's in more than just one 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 scene. I hope they have him as a reoccurring character because it was fun. So is um, gonna get gonna get any of his music? Well, it, it's set in the eighties, so it's probably not. I don't think Rage Against the Machine came around till the nineties. Although yeah. they were kind of just starting out, maybe in the late eighties. So you might. Although this is, I think, early eighties. And so yeah, and you know, but it's got it's actually got a great soundtrack, very punk, very uh, and you know, very colorful. It has has that great cartoon di- uh, comic book dynamic, and yeah, and a great sort of villain origin story of our protagonist uh, and his hatred of Ronald Reagan, <laughs> which you know, hey, it was the nineties; everyone hated Reagan. Uh, <laughs> And, but they actually tie it to something really, a real issue, which was the deinstitutionalization of uh, mental health services in America, which is one of these weird things because there are advocates for deinstitutionalization on the left as well, but it was just poorly, poorly executed where basically rather than move people who were able to back into society, they simply shut down the mental institutions and let a lot of people run around Free, causing chaos and leading to a person who jumps off a building and lands on the guy's parents. And that is his tragic supervillain origin. So, spoilers! Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but like I said, I'm really enjoying it. It's on sci-fi. Um, that the episode that got us Krypton, which I watched three whole episodes of. And, <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? But my DVR is working now, and although it's not recording Big Bang Theory for me, I think CBS doesn't like people recording because they have their pay service. If you want to watch Big Bang, well, uh, I mean, our direct TV works, but maybe, maybe I don't know. I was gonna say maybe it's the, it's the last season. They're like, ah, who cares yeah. if it works? Yeah, but I did notice it's all. It's only my CBS shows. It's because hmm. that young children. When I go to play them, it says we're having trouble replaying this. Try again hmm. later. So I don't know, man. I think CBS is not liking that. Um. Oh, that's one thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, Disney Plus is it right? Disney Plus. Yeah. They've revealed more about the Loki story. Oh. And it is going to be a young. Well, they're saying it's going to be a young Loki story. Yeah, I heard on another podcast. Yeah. I think they were saying, um, yeah, it's going to be like Loki basically recounting his greatest hits or whatever. Well, that's that's the thing. We know that Tom Hiddleston is narrating it. Yeah. Yeah. And. Yes, it could be this is the origins of Loki, but I wonder if we're going to get actual modern-day kid Loki, and it's their great little workaround where they say, no, this is Loki's real honest death. He's not coming back this time. And then, no, it's not Loki, that's kid Loki. Um, And, you know, and again, talking about your redemptive arcs, um, the kid Loki storyline for Loki is where Loki got to be really great, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and granted, they brought about Kid Loki because Tom Hiddleston was so lovable mm-hmm. as Loki, a lovable, a lovable bastard. But um, <laughs> yeah, well, technically, um, yeah, true, true. But um, yeah, I just wonder, or unless the story is like it's him sitting around Valhalla, you know, telling his life story to you know. Like, screw oh. the executioner, be like, yeah, you know what I did in the uh, 1600s? Yeah. Well, actually, Scourge is still alive. Oh, he could be talking to Volstagg. Mm. Which is actually goes back to what I keep on saying. What I really want to see on Disney Plus is a Warriors 3 with Sif, Tessa Thompson, uh, Valkyrie, and uh, Volstagg's daughter. Well, I believe I heard. I think they said they're they are they're planning a Sif series on there. So I mm-hmm. mean, you could get you know yeah. any of them guest starring or whatever. Well, but you know, I'd like it. See, I think here's the thing. I actually like team shows, mm-hmm. and I like a show that has a team dynamic over just making it. Oh, it's the Sif show. I would rather do a Warriors three with Sif as one of you know taking on the mantle of the Warriors three now that they were so rudely murdered, uh, and since Volstagg has like 800 kids, wow. um, having a Volstagg daughter among them 
Or even just Volstagg Jr. If you if you need to have a man in there, if you need a man to be in, in the film, Ooh. you can have Volstagg Jr. as sort of, I want to be a warrior like my father, you know, and having and going to Sif and Tessa to, to teach him how to be a warrior and teach him how to drink, because we know that Tessa can drink. Yeah. Um, does, does she have a name other than Valkyrie, or they just call her Valkyrie? Um, She's not like Brunhild or, or Isagard or... In the MCU, I don't know. I don't think they've given yeah. they gave her another yeah. name, or they haven't. They yeah. they never mentioned. She just it, has so. the title. She just has yeah. the title. Okay, so but she is the Valkyrie, and that's cool because we all love Tessa Thompson. She's awesome, um, and her and Sif will get along great. And you know, it'll be great because then Sif's kind of in the Hogan the Grim role, and Tessa is kind of the f- flandral f- fan fan role, and then and then you need a Volstag. That's all I'm saying. You need a Volstag in there. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah, that's the big hope. I mean, it's like this. There's so much that Disney Plus can do. And, of course, it's not just Disney. I mean, that's, and again, this is, like I said, one of these things where Disney's re- remarketing themselves in a way to be an all-inclusive platform, unlike DC Plus, which is just DC. Mm-hmm. Which is like, okay, it's just DC, and that's, that's great. But, you know, you have so, many, uh, so much other content that you can cross over with. Um you know, so I, I I would love to see this Kid Loki series. I would love, I'd love to see a whole Asgard section. Yep. In there. And then, you know, because obviously it's going to be two years before we get our Netflix guys back. Mm-hmm. But like I said, two years is not that long mm-hmm. and they're coming back. I mean, that's the thing. And, and I, like, I know some of the actors are saying, well, I guess we're moving on. I'm also waiting for freaking the new, Pe- the new adventures of Peggy Carter. Where we find out that she's been hopped up on Infinity Formula this whole time, was all faking her own death because there's deeper states she's got to deal with, and who knows, man? Let's see what what happens with after Captain Marvel, man. You know, not for nothing. You got that creep. She's the guy that she's the one who found. Mm-hmm. You know, so it wouldn't surprise me if we get some Infinity Formula tossed out in this story. You know, and uh, I think Captain Marvel's going to have that Infinity uh, formula going in there, and I do think we're getting Peggy Carter back. But, you know, they'd like to keep all the stuff quiet. So, of course, all the actors have to say, well, you know, it's up to Marvel if I ever get to come back, you know. But I think some people, like, I think the lady who plays Karen Page is kind of done with Karen Page, you know. Maybe. And, you know, not for nothing, aren't we all? <laughs> oh, but I mean, with those Netflix guys, couldn't they go start producing stuff now and then, like, on the you know exactly two yeah. years to the day to release it? Be like, bam! All right. Well, exactly. Yeah, but they, you know, they have to keep it quiet because there are yeah. rules on on what you can say about these things. Mm-hmm. You know, and Disney is a stickler for the rules. You know, that's why I don't believe anything ever leaks from from Disney. I think that basically, you know. It gets out there because Disney says yes. Tell them this now. Yes, um, yeah, yes. Tom Holland leak that for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you notice they never leak anything that earth shattering. Yeah, no. It's usually always just something that makes you go, "Ooh, that's interesting. That's interesting." You know, almost as if it wasn't planned to make you g- gain interest in the product. T- tell Ruffalo <laughs> to leak the first minutes of inf- the first five minutes of Infinity War. <laughs> yes. Well, you know. <laughs> um... Oh, I'm looking forward to Infinity War. That's going to be fun. You mean Endgame? Um, uh, Electric Boogalore, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. You, re- you refuse to call it Endgame, don't you? It's not. It's not a good <laughs> title. You know, here, if they if they give us the Squadron Supreme in it, I'll I'll Endgame the heck out of it. But you know, because that's where that title's from. It's when they meet the it's when they meet the Squadron Supreme. <laughs> Because the Grandmaster and Kang are having a little contest, they should do. And, they should bring in Squadron Supreme because I mean, you're never going to get like that Batman, you know, like the DC stuff, Marvel vs. DC on the big screen. That's like the closest you're going to get. Yeah, yeah. I, and, and there may be there may be reasons why they can't do that too. I don't know. They may have rules about that sort of thing. You never want to get litigious. They're, they're, they're both big behemoths, you know. Yeah, I know, but it's like it's it's not like they just created a lot of thin air, though. It's like, look, yeah. we have decades of stories with these characters. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But they were they were they were an intentional pastiche of the Justice League. Oh, they yeah. Do that at crossover, you know. Ah, but it is what it is. Um, I'm I'm I mean, honestly, if we get if we get uh, Grandmaster in it, 
that will be fantastic. And then calling it Endgame makes sense. <gasps> you, know? you know what they could do do with them that, that you always wanted? What? Bring in the actress who played uh, Tilda Johnson on Luke Cage and make her Nighthawk. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Give her work. Get, get our, get our uh, Nightshade Nighthawk. Yeah. Oh. oh, and speaking of that, let's just talk about the great works of uh, Mr. David F. Walker. Oh, uh, I finally read Bitter Root. I am so behind on comics, guys. I'm like two weeks behind on comics. <coughs> I gotta say this. It's like the only comics I have time to read anymore are, my, are the comics I, I have digitally, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I get them on the phone, and unfortunately, Bitter Root does not have a digital code, so I can't read it on my phone. So, Just saying, just putting that out there. I would love to be able to read it on my phone. I cannot at the moment. But um, this continues to be just a great uh, piece of work. Um, we have just, oh, and I got it. I got it. There is a panel here, man. This is this. I don't know if this was already drawn by someone and it, and it, and it's a, a, a variation on it, or if this is original work, but I don't know if you can see that. I see it. Yeah. The demon cops and nice. the, you know, standing over there. It is just such an iconic bit of work and I love it. And, and, you know, we have these other, the, because you have the other cops because we have the, uh, I believe that's Sullivan and another guy. Um, I forget his name, but uh, Sullivan's the Irish cop, and then he's got his his, his African American partner. Okay. Um, but they can see the monsters too, which makes me wonder if like he that were because they did say they are going to do do something with you know that there's also an Irish group of people who fight monsters and an Asian group of people who fight monsters here in the American melting pot of fighting monsters and. Um, we get it revealed that basically, like the the creatures they fight, the Geno are um, are humans that have with corrupted souls that become monsters, but they also have these actual monsters that pretend to be humans. That they may be the ones that are causing all the problems, and it's it's a great book and a great series. And we have our little uh, other character here who clearly is juiced up with some kind of superpowers, and he's tearing all the demons apart too. So. There's a lot going on here. Um, it took me a long time to get to Bitter Root 3, but I got it, and man, it was worth the wait. It is a great book. And then also, I want to just call out, uh, it came on a Wednesday. Okay. Um, Alternate Comics. I haven't read the, this. Is, this is, and they finally did this for me, where they actually say, here's what this leads to. Um, we have this great little piece here um, called... Uh, actual Roger, and it is such a great little thing. And I mean, they're going for that Billy Bat- Batson vibe with this kid here, right? I mean, that is just that is just one hundred percent classic Billy Batson with a fro. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we get, you know, he's got his best friend, and like he like had this. This was the day he decided to give up comic books and superheroes, even the real ones like Magnanimo. Um, <laughs> And his friend doesn't like that because his friend is still hyper into comics and eats dirt. And, um, of course, a crazy cosmic thing from space falls through. Uh, he gets pushed into the cosmic thing. His friend eats the dirt the cosmic thing fell into. And then we got to see what happens next. His friend Clay has some sort of malleability powers. We don't know what, what yet, but we're going to have to see how that goes. And him, he starts flying. Huh. And then it says here, coming in January, which I guess is now, um, what happens next? Find out in The Actual Roger. So I'm getting that put to my full list. And hmm. It's the first time they had where they said, oh, we were actually going to be making a book on this. So I'm excited for that. I'm gl- so it'll be my second alternate comics that I'll be picking up on a regular uh, basis going forward. What issue number was that? That was, uh, it came out on a Wednesday, number four. Nice. Ask, ask your comics provider to provide it for you. And then I still haven't gotten to it, but I've already, I just put it just out of sheer hope and love. I put it under my pull list. Haven't finished reading one yet. Two is already out this week. Um, Conan the Barbarian is Ooh. back in the MC universe. Um, uh, oh, look, it starts off with Conan the King. Um, Conan is awesome. Conan is the original super soldier because all it takes to be a super soldier is proper diet and exercise. Um, oh, and speaking of proper diet and exercise, um, I read 
last issue of Winter Soldier. Okay. With RJ. Yes. Now, have we gotten any more of RJ's Secret Origin prior to this, or...? No, only what what one did you read? One or two? Did you read number two? Because I that that was like uh, the one that came out last week, the one where, where that has him in the Bucky uniform. Yeah, no, that, yeah, no, that's it. Shoot. That's yeah, that's we, the only one. Okay, yeah. is there another one out yet? Or I think there was one before that. Okay. Yeah, 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 there was one before that, but I didn't, I, I didn't know if there was any more backstory. Because yeah. here's the thing: remember when um, this was when Bucky was Cap. And mm-hmm. Cap came back, because everyone thought Cap was dead, but he was lost in time, but he came back. And he said, oh, no, Bucky, you stay Captain America. I'm going to be Super Soldier for a while, you know? And then he had that adventure with Machine Smith, mm-hmm. trying to recreate the Super Soldier serum. And the final scene of that is they go, the reason why it always fails is because, you know, you have to have the right person to put it into. And so they find a kid... Who is who's a little dark haired boy like this one, uh-huh. who's skinny and weak and you know, but also, you know, caring for his mother who's sick and da 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 father died in a war or something, you know. And he's like, This is the exact person that Steve Rogers was. This is how we're gonna build our next super soldier. And looking at our gym thing, they that kid looks exactly the same. Now maybe that's coincidence. It would not surprise me, because it was like one of these dangling left un Left unresolved stories that they're that they're that they're looking for Steve Rogers is, mm-hmm. and so including this kid, when we see what we get from his origin, there's a lot of bad things that have happened. So, um, and it's definitely Hydra because you know, cut down one and two more will rise up. Which you know, not for nothing, that is like got to be the worst motto for a, a, a team of for an organization of supervillains. Oh yes, yeah. especially. <laughs> Especially run into like a Wolverine or a Punisher, they're like, "Okay, let's test that out." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and not for nothing, but it literally is. We are expendable cannon fodder. Face us. I don't know how that really gets you going, man. Unless you're like totally culty, but you know, and maybe they are. Maybe it's just like you know, they're really, really culty. But I think that is going to cut into your overall recruitment uh, goals. Yeah. From an HR perspective, I think it's just a bad business motto. I don't know. I mean, some people might not join, but I mean, there are even real world uh, examples where it's like, oh yes, you know, you know, suicide bomb yourself and you'll get rewarded in the after in life, you know. Yeah, but the thing is, is that they're not even going with a re- like. Here's the yeah. thing: if you embrace "I will get rewarded in the next life" concept, okay, maybe maybe suicide bombing makes sense in that perspective in that cosmological structure. If you're really that into it, I can see it. Although even that has recru- – they also have a hard time recruiting suicide bombers, believe it or not. Um, it's actually a very hard hard job to get people to go into, and often people who go into it are already suicidal. So. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, desperation makes people do desperate things. Um, but it's like I don't see – I don't see that – I don't see – I don't see what is, what is Hydra's Valhalla. I don't see, you know – Hydra mm-hmm. doesn't have a Valhalla, you know? That's the thing. It's like a Viking says, I will see, we will die in Valhalla. That makes sense. That's a battle cry. Because it acknowledges your own mortality, but also says, but there is, if, if that worst case happens, there are, there are greater things for us as well. Or could there also be, like, some mental conditioning, too, to make oh, it more yeah. susceptible? Yeah. yeah, you will comply. Um, <laughs> compliance will be rewarded. Yeah, I mean, that's get your old Faustus method. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, you go into the yeah hypnosis, the world's greatest superpower. That and kung fu, man. Can't beat kung fu. You can't beat hypnosis. And if you hypnotize the guy to fight kung fu, they'd be un- if you had kung fu and hypnosis, that person would be just the the most powerful supervillain of all. Speaking of uh, mental powers, do you want to talk invaders number one? Uh, yeah, you know, and you made an interesting reference because yes, we get our big. Spoilers if you haven't read it. And by the way, I love this book. This was, mm, this was probably my favorite Marvel book I read. Mm-hmm. Beating out uh, Rhino in uh, in Ultimate Spider Man, uh, which I also read. Um, I really like that. Uh, I, I I love the Rhino. That with Miles yeah. Morales. Yeah, Miles Morales. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's not called Ultimate Spider Man. It's just called Miles, Miles Morales. Morales. Yeah. I should go back with Ultimate Spider Man. Yeah, you know, they really should. It's like if they team up with with Doc Ock. You know. It's like, I'm the superior Spider-Man. Yeah, well, I'm the ultimate Spider-Man. Booyah! 
<laughs> See, that would be fine. But uh, <laughs> no, but okay. What I loved about this is the idea of, and this crazy concept that you probably never even thought of. Does Namor have PTSD? Mm. And you really get this idea. I mean, you're watching. It's like, you know, the war never ended for Namor. And also, it immediately puts everything into a completely different perspective for Namor. This idea that, you know, after the war, he actually got really banged up by it. Like, mm. inside. Like, mentally. That, that's why he went am amnesiac and wandered around freaking the war for so many years, you know? Um, why he became as homeless derelict until um, until uh, uh, the human torch finds him, you know? This is the thing. You know, and I love that idea. Now, there may be this other quality because we see Charles Xavier there. What, Charles? Didn't he have hair then? Or has he always been bald? I forget that with Charles Xavier sometimes. No, I think in the comics they said he did go bald pretty young. I think once his power started manifesting, the hair started falling out. Yeah, so it's just in the movies that they let him have his hair. Movie stars, you know. Movie stars. I, I mean, look at the, look at the Superman movies. Gene Hackman, you know, was had hair most of the. Yeah, it was supposed to be a wig, but he had hair yeah. most of those movies. Yes. Oh, uh, you got to embrace the bald man. You got to embrace the bald. Bald by choice, as Terry Crews says. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, and it's it's great, and I love the Human Torch in this, and you know, and also almost like Jim Hammond, like just sort of sitting behind a desk in like just casual clothes. It was so neat seeing someone not be a superhero for five minutes. And just, yeah, I'm just writing my memoirs. And yeah, and even Captain America was like, you know, what? You don't have, like, com uh, like perfect re uh, recognition? And he's like, no. He's like, no, that's the way I was built to be, you know, closer to human. That You know, the memories fade just like regular humans. So Yeah, but of course, meanwhile, poor old uh, Cap's got eidetic memory. And it's like every person he's ever killed, you can still hear them crying for their mother. Maybe it's part of the serum. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, no, it is. It is. No, it, he, 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 yeah, he has eidetic memory. He might have had eidetic memory beforehand. We don't know that for certain. Because uh, we do know that he was pretty intellectually smart before that. Although, as I say, clearly not as sharp as he is when he's Captain America. Because, you know, yeah. otherwise the Illuminati wouldn't have run circles around him when he was old Cap. Um, but, no, I mean, it is an interesting question and an idea here when it comes to things like um, like how World War II really affected Namor. Because, and obviously, as in the point of that, Namor is like the one guy that was still kind of active, you know? Mm -hmm. Or was, he was, he didn't get, he didn't get a jump, he didn't get turned off, you know, because like, you know, everyone else, they got like a break from it. Namor, basically, after the war, goes home, finds out that, you know, his people have all left Atlantis and things have been destroyed. You know, it, it, he had a, he lost everything in that war and suddenly Namor makes a lot more sense. It suddenly makes Namor way more sympathetic when you actually put him in that context rather than just his normal arrogant, I am Sea King! Rah! <laughs> uh, um, although apparently they gave him the Aquaman power of controlling water now. Uh, <laughs> Although I don't, I do not trust his his grand vizier there. That that uh, yeah, that, that talky guy. It's like, oh, you're doing something. You're doing something. Um, you know. But yes, but they gave him water wizard power, or not water wizard, but like, yeah, no, that is water wizard hat. That yeah, he has he has hydro control kind of stuff. I, I was thinking more like Mira from Aquaman. Well, yeah, well, exactly like Mira too. I mean, I'm sure someone saw the movie. Oh, that's a cool power. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah, for nothing, it's also like just like the ultimate like offensive power as an Atlantean it's like oh okay you because since most Atlanteans can't breathe air just like exactly <laughs> okay <laughs> you're all dead now <laughs> but yeah it's and that's and, and that's what Namor does to get the this other where, the, where you get like this group of likewise PTSD suffering soldiers who have sort of broken away from Atlantis, the 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 what they call them the Sea Blades or something. Um, Why do they all speak English? That's but <laughs> I really shouldn't they all at best be speaking ancient Greek? Uh, <laughs> I guess Sea Blades is a translation. I don't know. Uh, but no, 
like, like I was like, okay, so were you saying you thought Xavier was helping Namor with his PTSD? I no, thought, I think, I, I, yeah, no, I see that's the thing that what worries me. Well, actually, what worries me is that it's going to be revealed that the whole reason he actually fought the war was because uh, Xavier was mind oh. controlling him the whole time. I was thinking maybe he he was running a mock, or or if it was PT at this D, maybe he wanted to forget. You know, one of those things like, oh yeah, wipe my memory, and then, and then he's all mad. Why did you wipe my memory? Because you told me to. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, for some reason it was Xavier, and that's why Namor's been erratic all these years. You know. Yeah, I mean it's entirely possible. I mean, yeah, I, honestly, ugh, problems that Charles Xavier causes. Um, I mean, it could have been, and you know, it could have been this thing where maybe he wasn't quite skilled with his m mental powers yet you know it's like and he tried like he th like that and then he just like erased too much or you know or he was trying to control him to help him deal with his ptsd and then but he just couldn't handle it you know and yeah like, I, I mean well there was a story i wish the stupid code would have worked for marvel comics presents number one this mm -hmm. this week also there was a name there was three stories in there one was a name war from world war Two. Mm -hmm. And it was shown that he wasn't too happy when, I, when they dropped the uh, atomic bombs. And I believe the second, well, yeah, I think it was the second because he he found out about the first one. And then he, he went to stop the second one, and he was pretty close to the bomb when it went off. So I don't know if there was yeah. physical damage, also brain yeah. damage. There's lots of things. Uh, not for nothing, those bombs. Well, you know, they are, and they're like the one thing. This is one of the things I've always said about superheroes, man. Nuclear bombs are gonna. Uh, they're basically why we don't have superheroes. Mm. Because once you create nuclear bombs, superheroes become obsolete. You know, you don't need a superhero to destroy a city now. You can just push a button. Yes. Just sit in a room and push a button. Just pushing Phil's nose there, who people were wondering what I was doing on the screen. <laughs> yeah, just like just like uh just like uh Hephaestus um in uh The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. My favorite film. Um, well, one of my many favorite films. But, yeah, so, yeah, there's there's a lot going on there. And I, I actually, I, I uh, you know, it's it's pulled. It's waiting. I just got to go get it and um, get it out of Hawk when I can get myself to the comic book store again. It was a busy week this week. I had the money. I just couldn't get to the store. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that that was that. That was great. That was awesome. Um no, oh, have we talked Fantastic Four? Or do you want to save that for um, the? I, I, you know, we, we're, for the first time, we're doing Super Connectivity first. We can talk yeah. anything. Do you want to talk Orville? Did you see Orville or no? Uh, oh yeah, because Lilith hasn't been watching. Yeah, I saw Orville last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. And again, this is like this is what I think is so perfect about the Orville is it. And like, I, I'm sorry, Lilith. It is not Family Guy in space because it's not. <laughs> It's not a jokey show. Yeah. You know, they have some gag characters and they have gag things that happen with them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, the, 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 the pilot, um, you know, trying to say, should I go into command? And it's like, you know, and, but also him coming to realize I'm a really good pilot, mm -hmm. you know? And this is what I am really, really good at. And yes, I it may I may not be right for command. And I think he is not giving up on command yet, but I really like that. And I loved this quality with um we find out that the that the love interest introduced last week, spoilers if you haven't seen it, because it's a big spoiler, was actually the uh Krill. teacher the Krill <laughs> teacher whose ship he murdered. Saved all the kids, but he murdered all the adults. And you get all this stuff about, you know, Avis and, uh, you know, and how the Krill approaches. And you find out, and this was what I thought was most interesting. You find out that on the other side of Krill's space, there's another group of aliens <laughs> that the Union hasn't met yet that is not too pleased with uh, with the Krill. And it makes me wonder, and it was kind of, I was a little disappointed that they didn't do more with them, but I understand they probably had constraints, and maybe we're going to get them back later. Because obviously the enemy of my enemy is my friend, um, and the fact that and clearly the krill make a lot of enemies. That whole Avis has given the universe to us, and only the krill have souls. It's like, yeah, you're you gotta just dial that back, sweetheart. Um, well, I mean, I thought was that like uh, you know 
uh, you know, like certain religious zealots in the real world. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but I like what what um, you know, and again, this perfect Star Trek quality that you know, and this is what I say. Um, and I'm forgetting I'm forgetting the captain's name now, but Captain Mercer. Mercer, yeah, right? yeah, Captain Mercer. He is such a great Kirk. You know, I mean, he because re- he has all the qualities of a proper William Shatner Kirk. You know, he's he's he he's a beefy guy, but he he can believably deliver that you know dialogue that does say, "Look, we have found that cultures go one of two ways when they find out they're not alone. Either they get, either they embrace the fact that there is that they cannot be the center of the universe, or they get extra xenophobic about yes. everybody." And I love that as this basic dynamic of most cultures. And, you know, now, of course, likewise, you see in every culture, it's always a mix, you know, because we see that with the um, with the Machlins, you know, they're very xenophobic in their own way. And, and uh, you know, in several other cultures, they're very xenophobic, but they also are willing to embrace the fact that, yes, there are other creatures out there, even if we are the best. <laughs> But yeah, I was getting the feels at the end of that episode when he let her go go with the complete works of Billy Joel. I was like, oh, then I was like, I was like, wait a minute, this is the Orville. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a good show. I know. It's a, it's a good show. And that, that's the thing. It's like, it's, you know, if you come to that show looking for fart jokes, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Because, you know, I mean, like the, the, the biggest joke you had was the fact that Patrick Warburton's character has two esophagi. Um, and he's not sticking around, which I knew what he wasn't. That is way too much makeup for an actor to wear every. Although the guy who plays Isaac, like, yeah, tell me about it. But uh, but Isaac's at least because it's metallic, it just it slips on and off. I was gonna say it's Whereas, like a suit. Yeah, it just puts yeah, the yeah. Body on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the whole you got you got a thing that attaches, and that's you know that's a lot of movement. It's a little too fleshy to have to wear every week. Um, I don't know, but Patrick Warburton's character kind of reminds me of, like, the alien uh, version of Putty, who he played on Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was kind of just, dis- well, like, very much. It was very much a, well, a, more of a stoner Putty. It, like yeah, I said, it was, yeah. it was, But I kind of, like, I'm a little sad to see him go, because I really wanted to have that scene where he actually shows that he actually is uh, a BA security officer. Yes. <laughs> But uh, that's okay. We're going to live with it. And um, I hope we've gotten a lot less uh, Norm MacDonald um, oh, yeah. this so far, uh, which is a little sad. But um, I thought he was in the credits. Maybe it was last week or something, but I don't think we yeah. saw his character. I think he, he was in a crowd scene once, but I don't think oh, he was maybe. at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, though they did, they did mention him because they said that he was... You know, wanted to know what the maternity leave was, and is like, oh, is he thinking about splitting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and maternity leave is obviously a big problem on this because we got the Machlins that just laying eggs left and right. <laughs> oh, and of course the Machlin peeing ceremony. Uh, <sighs> yes, but it was a moving. It was. It, it was great, and you know, it it was it was all really well done. Yeah. Like I said, the, the Orville continues to make me happy. I watched the Orville every um, Watched it more than... I watched that before Gotham. And I usually do. Because, you know, I like Gotham, and this was a good episode uh, where we get, again, like we were saying, that this is very much... Well, you thought, well, well I was going to say, let's save that. Let, let's get we'll a little... Save that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is in there. Well, because I know you guys already talked about it on... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On um, whatever you call that show. Gotham. Before the uh, Bat. Before the Bat. Before the Bat. Uh, although I was just waiting... I mean, I gotta say, just spoilers. Okay. That kid, that kid set those bombs. Oh, you think so? Oh. Oh, that kid, the deputy is totally. He is totally Jerome's plan. This is all Jerome pulling the strings. And I'm gonna say this. I'll say it again. And in in in, uh, in in Babs is tell is going to be Talia's mom. Oh. Because you're gonna see that Roz ain't dead, and Roz is still playing this game too. Hmm. And he's got a thing for Stabby Babs. And I think that, you know, I think you're going to find out that she's going to run off with Roz at the end. And she's going to say, if it's a girl, let's name her Talia. Oh. And then she can date the Green Arrow. <laughs> it's Batman. <laughs> Willful <laughs> yellow. <laughs> yes, but no. Uh, no, but and it makes perfect sense. Because who is Talia's mom? We don't know. True. But 
because we don't know who. But Rod's clearly he's had relationships. He's had people he's bred with over the centuries. Oh yeah, and it makes sense that he probably would have feeling. He would catch feels for these people from time to time. You yeah. know, and if not, if nothing else, she's great breeding stock to raise an assassin. If only she could have had a boy. Oh. <sighs> Oh, he's, he's an old-fashioned man, and that's why he must die. <laughs> Even Batman eventually got a female, uh, female round. Yes, he did. So, uh, anything else to talk about this week, Philip? Ah, uh, no, I think that's good. Uh... That's great. Well, so let's do it all some more in a few minutes. Uh, um, scroll up for um, Capes and Lunatics. Capes and Lunatics, and or Lunatics. Uh, Philip, in the meantime, how can people find you to tell you all the wonderful things I'd like to talk to you about? Uh, if you want to know the greatness of Charlie Esser, email me, nightwingpdp at gmail.com. On Twitter, I am at nightwingpdp. And follow Capes and Lunatics and Super Connectivity on all, so- all social media. And YouTube. Subscribe to YouTube. And YouTube. Yes, yeah, so you can see that handsome face I get to look at every week. Me too. He's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought you meant in the mirror. I just Oh, no, no, I meant you. No. Oh, so nice. Um, anyway, and of course, write to me in an old-fashioned email with the way I'm Oz and said at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. Of course, follow me on the Twitters, at Charlie Esser, when I tweet things when I can, which is rarely. At Charlie Esser, that's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-E-S-S-E-R. Let's put the two E's in the middle for quality. quality. There we go. Uh, and always remember, raise your kids on the classics like Billy Joel. Um, thank you for connecting with us, ladies and gentlemen. Please super connect with us again next week. Good night. Good night. Oh man, I wish we wish we had like we could like play some music. I'd be play that Billy Joel song like they did at the end of the Orville. <laughs> well, you know, but again, that, that there's that quality of that where it's like, oh yeah, Billy Joel. We all think of him as this little pop star, but then. She's always a woman to me. Plays you got, that is like the perfect song for this character. And she's yeah. Funny, you know, and you know, Billy Joel. It's a classic and will exist for four hundred years as classical music. Although I gotta, get, I gotta hear some say, oh, all that snooty classical music like Billy Joel. I think the best line was like, "You sympathize with the Nazis in that in, in Raiders of the Lost yes. Ark." Yes. Well, you know. <laughs>